Ladies and gentlemen, are you tuning in? Are you listening? Can you hear it broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com? You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the lighter side of genocide, because in a world so full of chaos and madness, if you lose your sense of humour, you'll go friggin' nuts. Especially me. A very special guest today, uh, and we'll be joined by his uh, uh, friend in, in probably the next segment, if he ever accepts our contact request, but we have Matt Presty. Matt, welcome to the program. Hello. It's good Good to be here, Vince. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, and the, thing, the topic that we're going to be discussing today. Well, I'm an autodidactic musician and philosopher, and I'm also co-producer of the series The Secret of Light, which is teaching to mankind a science that is not taught in universities today. But uh, it's based around the work of Walter and Leo Russell, two illuminates who uh, have since refolded from the planet. Um, and we have a video series at thesecretoflight.com that is free for anyone to view. Okay, okay. Well, let's get into um, uh, you personally first, because I think we'll actually wait till Robert comes in. Um, he, he actually appears to have accepted uh, contact requests and is uh, online uh, right now. Uh, so hopefully the board will be able to bring him up uh, soon enough. But before we go to that, I want to talk about you personally, Matt, and, and just, just the kind of person you are and what actually brought you into this whole field um, uh, regarding philosophy and uh, the secret of light, as it were. Well, I've uh, been researching conspiracies, uh, transcendence, enlightenment, for many years, and um, I discovered the work of Walter Russell in 2008, and since then, it has been an endeavor of the heart to uh, deliver a new science to mankind for um, the purpose of stopping the one-way heat death, expanding universe theory, because all it can produce under that current scientific formula is exploding machines, machines that explode energy. And what Russell's science will do is free mankind and teach him a two-way motion universe, which is cyclical, not a one-way heat death dying universe. So the cyclical universe, we consider the other end of the pendulum or the other end of the cycle, which is implosion. And implosion technology is what's going to free us from the hellhole that's been created by the energy barons, the, the central bankers and the warmongers now running this racket. Well, they've been running it for... Um... <clears throat> Well, quite a long time, and uh, one one would conceive, and, and this is a, this is a big theory on the part of a lot of people, is that uh, well, basically they've been running it since uh, since time began, and and it's a heck of a lot more ancient the uh, the current ruling class than we would ever conceive of. Now, I don't know exactly uh, uh, what the substantiation behind that claim is, but it doesn't change the fact that there are a bunch of criminal sociopathic uh, psycho bankers that rule the world today through the issuance of currency, all right? And and as a direct result of having the issuance of currency under their direct control, they're able to control pretty much everything else. They're able to control the scientific, medical, military, and industrial um, sectors of society, education, politics. Basically, he who has the gold makes the rules, and they're capable of making gold up. That is uh, true for now, but... Uh... If the enti entire economy collapses, people are going to be forced through necessity to begin inventing new things. And as they say, uh, necessity, um, you know, the mother of all invention is, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. So when mankind is hurting enough, he's going to have no choice but to either create his own power or continue to be enslaved even deeper into this, you know, ridiculous paradigm that's now... Uh, running the show i think uh australia just began carbon carbon taxing um and also it's it's come out that they will now fine you uh i believe it's uh 1.5 million australian dollars if you come out publicly uh disagreeing with the carbon tax so yeah aussies you you don't like your carbon taxes how about a $1.5 million tax? <laughs> That'll teach you for trying to save the environment, eh? Kind of like those hybrid cars. Don't you, don't you love that? The whole idea is, is, is that you're trying to save the environment, but 
the problem is you wind up making your own environment as in your body, your mind, your soul. That's the environment that you have to live in every day. Uh, you make that a heck of a lot more stressed, poorer, and uh, as a result, unhealthy. Stress and uh, and poverty are big indicators of how long you're going to live. So isn't that, isn't that great? It's wonderful. We've now got a carbon tax which will tax absolutely everything that we do uh, in every way, shape, and form so that poverty will be impossible to escape forever at least that's the idea but i'm sure there's many ways of turning this around don't you think man i would hope so i mean it's going to take a lot of people to think differently and that's the main drag on humans escaping anything at this point as long as people continue to think the same and accept the same mediocrity life that has been handed to us all we're never going to escape this hellhole but uh, what Robert and I are doing jointly and along with many other people is uh, spreading the information about the two-way motion universe. Uh, mankind as it is right now will never, in this currently, current university system, as physics and science is taught with these so-called laws that are not really laws, they're, just, they're like laws of you know, any other man's laws, they're, they're not infallible, we have to... Um, overthrow the current scientific dogma that's pervading all the universities and so we're teaching a two-way science which is based uh, right alongside with um, Walter Russell. It is Walter Russell's science and he was a cosmic illuminate who had a 39-day illumination and so the knowledge he brought back 40,000 words written down and hundreds of charts and drawings that really lay out in, in a way nobody's ever you know, said before that we, you know, have a cyclic electric universe. Okay, now we have, uh, Robert has, uh, in fact, uh, uh, come on with us now. Robert, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you too. Okay, well, we've heard uh, Matt's uh, sort of background about how he got into this whole um, light journey and, f and philosophical modality. I was wondering, uh, what actually kind of woke you up and got you into all of this? Um, I began studying it uh, quite a long time ago. Um, just an interest. Uh, actually, you know, back in 1976 when I was going to uh, university, my professors told me after the first six weeks of school in chemistry class that the nuclear theory of the atom they just taught us was a fraud. They said, look, this thing's just a model. It's not real. Um, you know, it's just what we're basically uh, forced to teach you as part of the curriculum. So, you know, that got me thinking a long, long time ago. Well, you know, what was the point of even studying chemistry if, in fact, the foundational premise of this nuclear theory of the atom was false? So, uh, through my own realizations and through, you know, basically being taught by a wise man, uh, the seeds of Russellian science were actually planted in my consciousness back in the early 90s by a man named Gene Davis. And he didn't tell me about you know who the source of this information was being Walter and Leo Russell but he got me thinking about the cubic wave fields and this this cosmology that Walter Russell had taught and then about you know when 95 1995 when the internet really kind of became available to most people I started doing a lot of research because I was very interested in in these topics you know uh, when what I began to see was a lot of ether vortex theories that went all the way back to Descartes you know were several hundred years old that that you never even heard about you know there are dozens of them dozens of people trying to basically uh, say the same things about their the intuition, the um, the inner insight that they had into the process of working in, with nature. So uh, eventually, I found uh, Victor Schauberger. Uh, I created a website. I started really focusing on free energy technologies like Victor Schauberger, uh, Nikola Tesla, T. H. Murray, and others. And after a couple of years of authoring this website, I discovered the secret of light. And once I started reading the secret of light, I realized this was the, all the stuff that Gene Davis had been telling me. You know the the fundamental uh, the foundations of of this Russellian cosmology. So over the next you know s several years, my site basically morphed into a website uh, focusing on the works of Walter and Leo Russell, which explained all of these uh, these theories that people had had that we were never ever taught or even exposed to in academia. I mean, we see a very one-sided view of uh, of science according to that we never hear the other side of any of this. So um, th that's the way I got into it. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that's a lot um, similar to do with lots of other people. It's it's like somebody tells you something and they're in an official position and you find out that it's wrong and yet 
heaps of officials all keep backing up each other and they secretly admit that they're wrong so you're like sure what what what's going on here the confusion starts to set in and um i think um as you mentioned before uh, uh matt that uh in necessity is the mother of all invention so what happens is we necessitate that it's n- uh, that it's now uh, time to understand what's really going on and as a direct result we have to invent a whole new way of thinking and a whole new basic um, life path for ourselves in order to even fit in to that invention that we've come up with it's like i now want to understand i once was blind here we go now you lose everything as a result of doing that like career paths etc they kind of disappear did, did that happen to you guys anyway, or did you not really have much of a career and then all of a sudden this became it? Well, actually, my career, I'm a, a technician, audio technician, and uh, in the electrical field as an electrician, I studied the uh, atomic models that were taught in school and whatnot. Uh, you know, the, the, the current theories, the, the Big Bang, the one-way heat death expanding universe, but I also have a shamanic background, which was completely and utter, utterly different in my experiential life, that I actually experienced something that was unlike anything in any book anywhere. But when I had acquired the Russell teachings, what I began to read from Walter Russell correlated and qualified a lot of my shamanic experiences. So it was natural for me to move into that that area of, of study. Uh, as far as do, does it affect my job? No, I still do what I what I need to do. I'm, you know, I'm one of many who are you know researching independently, trying to bring new light and truth to the world. But I still have to chase the capitalistic carrot, unfortunately. And uh, you know, I'm doing this not for the money. I'm doing this to try to give my children and, and the children of other people a better world to live in, one that's not full of toxicity and pollution and Fukushima's and 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 more meltdown reactors. You know, the danger of of you know radiation radioactivity is is a another big reason that I wanted to do this because you know I had had a uh, visionary experience just a couple of years ago and I saw probably six months before the Fukushima reactor meltdown in my vision mile-long line of Japanese men carrying buckets of water and dumping it into a hole by the ocean. And the every time they would dump a bucket, it would just turn into steam. And so that was a very profound experience when I, when I actually heard of, you know, the meltdown and, and what was going on. It, it qualified that vision. So fortunately, I'd already read the book Atomic Suicide by Walter and Leo Russell, which really gets into the reasons as to why nuclear fission is deadly and should not be used as a world fuel because we might not have a world in another 50 years if we continue to do this. It could kill every living thing in every blade of grass and eventually force humans to have to move to the poles to survive. But um, you know, people well, just do not... Un- that's another thing. They, they wouldn't really be able to live, move to the poles to survive because we've been using uh, DDT and other pesticides for so long and they've all been carried by the trade winds up to the, up to the poles. So we wouldn't be able to survive there either. Exactly. So just to try and stave off our own extinction with the stupidity of, of, you know, what these people have put forward as using usable power, all because of greed and avarice, and and they do not want to share. And that is a major concern of mine as well. So I just try to be a, a person that I would like to, you know, I try to, be the change that I seek to see in the world as opposed to just talking about it. And uh, as far as my work and employment, it has not affected it at all. In fact, it's, it's, you know, I get the chance to talk with people in the industry about things like this. And I told them I had to leave work early today just to get here to do this interview. And they were much obliged to let me go. So, Oh, well, that's nice. There's, there's one person at least who's uh, managed to start up a truth of career without uh, ending their other one. What about, what about you, Robert? Same thing. Um, actually, I worked in the recording industry as a you know recording engineer for about fifteen years, and um, you know with the advent of the personal computer back around two thousand two thousand one, uh, a lot of the uh, small studios I worked in were put out of business because you know most people could just produce a CD or right on their their computer. So for the last ten years, I've been kind of working from one. Ranch restoration, you know, gardening, uh, doing doing all these uh, 
these jobs where I basically caretake ranches and stuff. And I just finally acquired a, um, a job recently. I'm moving on in the next few days to a horse ranch. So um, I, I, I like being on ranches. I like being out in the, in the, um, the wilds and being close to nature, working with organic gardens and fruit trees and walnuts and stuff. So, uh, no, it hasn't affected me. I mean, I, I don't place, you know, the acquisition of, you know, wealth is higher my priority. I mean, I've been pretty much obsessed with uh, knowledge and wisdom for, for most of my life. I mean, I had a shamanic experience also uh, back in 1976, which got me on this path so oh, right. well we're coming I mean, to break this perfect time to leave it there uh, we'll be right back in just a few minutes ladies and gentlemen uh, matt presti and robert otay are my guests from the secret of light.com right back just a few minutes ladies and gentlemen don't you go anywhere if you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Hi, this is Wendy Adams from Lightwaves Radio Inner Circle. I want you to think for a moment. What would it be like if there was no more Vinny Eastwood? No more shows, no more videos, no more support, no more champion of the underdog, no more humor to help us get through. Just no more Vinny Eastwood. We need to understand that what he does is for all of us, for the greater good. He's all about spreading the truth of his country and many countries. And there is a misconception. People seem to believe that he is living high on the hog, so to speak. Well, the truth is, he isn't. I'm asking you, please reach into your hearts. Go to the com and make a small donation. Any donation is welcome. Just do what you can, but do something. The world needs Vinny Eastwood, and now he needs you. Thank you. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Vinnie Eastwood Show.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, proudly broadcasting live in English on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and incidentally the VinnieEastwoodShow.com, broadcasting live from the fabulously fluoridated and Fukushima irradiated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, the island chained nation in the sunny slave South Pacific, where everybody by government mandate has a job as an incandescent light bulb. <clears throat> My very special guests... This is a plural. Is Robert O'Tay and also Matt Presti. Guys, welcome back. Now, we talked over the break about how um, what topics we discuss on this show. And um, basically, I ran out of... <laughs> I couldn't keep listing them because there's so many. Um, but you guys wanted to um, cover something specific about uh, the conspiracy within the scientific community. And, and indeed, science itself being um, almost a victim, if not part, of a conspiracy. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'd love it if you could uh, relate and explain it to us. Go ahead, take that, Robert. Oh, uh, I thought you had that, Matt. I thought you both had it. it. Sure, <laughs> but, uh, sure man. I mean, you're the one that brought it up. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you lay out the history back to uh, 
1892, and then I'll, I'll take it from about 1960 on. Okay. Um, basically, uh, you know, by, the, by 1892, Tesla had created the wireless broadcast of free energy. And uh, that was only 12 years after he created basically the entire infrastructure over that 12-year period of what we're using now. You know, the generators, high transmission wires, uh, transformers, all this stuff. And by 1892, all that was already obsolete. He didn't want this entire system that we've been slaved into where you have, you know, power stations at the pinnacles of these, you know, creating energy. He wanted energy at point of use, at anywhere that you wanted it. So um, that was sabotaged. And then between then and 1915, uh, there was a period where these people that had sabotaged them had really realized that their, their astronomical profits they were making, you know, invested in coal and oil, railroads, refineries, shipping, all that stuff would be gone. So they decided to do, uh, to the, do their best and basically promote false science. And that's when, about by 1915, the beginning of Einstein worship really began, where nature took a devious uh, turn towards mythematics, you know, the study of the, the math of myths, things that don't exist, you know, big bangs, black holes, neutron stars, dark matter, dark energy, you could go on and there's hundreds of things that they've created in their science that actually don't exist. They're just products of, of this uh, basically egghead math. So that's um, th what they did was they, they hid the works of Tesla, people like Schauberger, Walter Russell, those people were never even acknowledged. Um, and Einstein was, you know, lifted up as the mannequin, you know, as their, as their genius. So that's, that's the beginning of it. In fact, I'm putting a link right now on your, your link page that gives a, a, a book that's 2,800 pages long documenting the process of, it's called the, uh, the Manufacture and the Sale of St. Einstein. And that was really kind of the death of physics, the, of natural science, whereas Russellian science that we're teaching is based on natural science. Yeah, and up until the, the current time, what we have is a university system that teaches this one-way heat death, Catholic priest created Big Bang, which uh, George LeMay was a Jesuit Catholic priest who came up with the Big Bang Theory and said it validated Einstein's theory of relativity. And the Pope, one week after the Jesuit uh, LeMay put his theory out there, Pope Pius conveniently confirmed that his theory proved Genesis 1-1. So it, it's just how convenient that the Catholic Church, you know, happens to approve of a theory that their own Jesuit put out, which also the theory itself... Whoa, 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 hold, you know, hold on a second. Who would have thought that a religious person would back something that already uh, that they already agree with that already uh, 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 goes along their same own, own ideology right who would have thought yeah, that go, go, go figure that i mean you know but people that, was, who are, that just came out of the blue man <laughs> wow you know it's, it's a surprise is it not i mean lots of people don't even know where the theories come from that they study and believe in in school very few people know who george lemate was or that he was even a catholic um, priest and a and a member of the Jesuit order, so you you know and the Vatican has its fingers into everything. So isn't that even funny? the science and and that's that's why I say you know there's so many red flags around the current scientific models that if you go to the core of them, if you drink from the Gulf, you will never know what, what where they sprang from. You have to follow these things back to their origins, hmm. and the origins are clear that you know. To me, at least, this universe is cyclical. It is not, you know, a one-way heat death dying universe. And what's brilliant about Walter Russell and the natural science that he taught and he realized in his 39-day illumination and wrote down as well, uh, taught that this was a cyclical universe of implosion and, and explosion, of compression and of radiation. And the, the vortice or the vortex, the twin opposing vortices are at the heart of this cosmology. And what twin opposing vortices are, if you take the Earth, for instance, a vortice is like a tornado, a hurricane, a, a galaxy. And this is the structure of all matter in the universe down to the atom and up to the, from the micro to the macro. 
atoms are not, you know, as the theory of the nuclear atom shows, you know, a bunch of balls bumping into each other and they make these silly little beaded models which are just laughable. Atoms are also vortexes, twin opposing vortexes. And the way the twin opposing vortex works is the north and south magnetic shafts of the planets and moons and atoms and galaxies you're, you're, implode. You're talking about the Taurus. Not necessarily. See, the Taurus is, is wrong as well. I mean, it's based on a good guess, but it's, it's, it needs some correction. And if they could simply study Walter Russell enough, they would understand where their flaws lie and how to fix it. The Taurus itself is, is missing some things, but it's, well, it's, it's a good... Go it's, ahead, the equi- it's the equatorial distribution of what's going on in a, between the twin opposing vortices. Each vortex is becoming the other through a point of stillness at the center, anything that can't become the other is thrown out along the equatorial plane, and that's what creates a torus. And that's what we see. You know, that's what we see as a galaxy. In, in this, the universe, we see ring systems and spherical systems. And if you look out in space, what do you see? Rings and spheres. The same is true of atoms. They're rings and sphere systems. They're not nuclear atoms with little balls you know, crammed together with, uh, you know, in, in nuclei with electrons and different orbital shells. That's completely false. Yeah, and so to, to just qualify the uh, twin opposing vortices, the implosion effect of these end winding, like air and winding in, into a tornado, it's wide at the top and at the base, it's it's the apex where that's where the maximum compression is achieved and then the release of that compression is unwound in the expanding equator at 90 degrees so the force of the tornado is where it touches the ground coming out at 90 degrees to the inward implosion and the same is true with the earth the inward the north and south poles of the two opposing vortices inwind the com- and compress the inert gases and the gases of space, the invisible space octaves, as Russell called them. There's uh, 21 elements lighter than hydrogen, which are distributed throughout space. And also, um, that is you know, where the uh, mislaid foundation of the ether comes from. If people could understand that the universe has to build itself up as well as burn itself out. It's a two-way motion. It's not one way. The, the current model is to say that, like, People inhale and exhale, that's two motions. We eat, we excrete, we wake, we sleep. So all things are in that dualistic nature, and that's really how Russell based his science on the knowledge of this two-way motion. So as right. the, the cold, get the, the cold um, nebulous elements of space are compressed toward the center, that's what creates the cold on the north and south poles. That's why the poles are cold. But the heat is given off at 90 degrees, which is where the equator is. And also rings are given off at the equator. So Saturn's rings, Jupiter's rings are all the effect of the imploding um, nebulous uh, elements that what about, um, meet at the center to create the heat, which is then released at 90 degrees on wasn't the equator. There, aren't there like uh, rings around uh, Uranus and, and they're actually vertical rings rather than horizontal? Yes, there are. Um, what what happens, and Russell also described this in his work, that planets are born from their primary star. They didn't just cool there from gases that from left over from a Big Bang. This is ridiculous. And what we see, all matter is born from from a mother. Everything that on this planet is born from something else, except for minerals, so to speak. But even those can become pressurized over time and change their elemental structure. So we have electric electricity, which is the only force in this universe, which steps up into the carbon octave to become solid and then becomes even more compressed to the point that it, it quickly releases its, its life force. So as a, as a, as a say, a, a planet gets older and farther away from its parent, which is the sun, it becomes older and begins to throw rings off, just like an old person has rings under their eyes. You know, you, you, your bones have rings in them. You, you're, the, the cells of your body are all spheres, and they begin to uh, die faster than they can generate. So at some point in the life cycle, death takes over, and the life force, the generation becomes uh, exceeded by the radiation of the body. 
So it's a very natural process, and we can see it throughout all the universe of mighty stars and suns and galaxies, this two-way motion process. What we don't see at the core of a galaxy is a black hole. You can look at any photo from any astronomy site and clearly see there are no black holes in the middle of any galaxy. I mean, that whole idea is, is just a, a, a total fiction. You know, there's no event horizons, there's no strings, you know, and, and show me a one-dimensional string. What is that, you know? I mean, all this stuff, as Robert said, was created through the mathematics, and it's not fair that we should condemn ourselves to say that we cannot understand our universe because we don't know quantum string theory or because we're not mathematicians. That's ridiculous. Anybody and everybody with a fourth grade education, when they study Russell's work, can understand this universe in an, an ideal and practical way that is, does not require I've, school or any other type of study. I, I, I've always seen these types of studies and um, uh, based upon, uh, we were talking about the Catholic Church and what have you. Originally, the Catholic Church instructed that uh, Bibles were only to be written in Latin because most people um, throughout uh, Europe and the, and the Christian world of the time didn't speak Latin, only the priest did. So it allowed the priest to have control over the knowledge and, and thus having control over the knowledge, control over the flock and the thoughts of the flock. Same thing with science here, isn't it? It is, and it's extremely compartmentalized. I mean, a quantum theorist has no idea about molecular biology, but yet Russell knew about all of it, and he he learned from an illumination that was lasted that lasted thirty nine days. He did not acquire his knowledge from books, and geniuses seldom, rarely, ever do. And he was a pal a uh, autodidactic polymath, self taught polymath. He lived. Five lives in one. He mastered everything he did and demonstrated the power of his vision and qualified it. And the funny thing is a lot of naysayers on YouTube will, will attack our videos and stuff. And, and they haven't done anything with their lives. Don't remotely you love even that? close. Except paid for an, overpaid for an education where they learned a bunch of theories by rote and have no knowledge. Repeating and Remembering and repeating is not knowledge. And the problem with science is that it, it uses the five senses to define the universe. And sensing is not knowing anything. You know, a sat we don't say a satellite has intelligence because it has eyes and ears. And so everything you, that you deduce from sense-based observations is actually an illusion. You know, the only way, and, and this is another important point about Russell, is that he, he knew this was a universe of mind, that consciousness creates the universe. Whereas science thinks that consciousness is an effect of matter, which is more hogwash, because anything that you look at around you right now that's man-made was first an idea in someone's head. Man had to build a body for it in order for it to exist in this temporal universe. It would not exist otherwise. Mm -hmm. And as Stephen Hawking said, uh, God was not needed to make the universe. Well, I beg to differ, Mr. Hawking, because... It's like saying man was not needed to build that bridge, that the bridge just built itself, that mindlessness builds itself. And I just don't agree with that because yeah. either that or it's he's nowhere just, in nature. Either that or he's just an anti-human, transhumanist trash bag who's trying to eliminate people's belief in God and spirituality so that they think that there's nothing higher out there other than themselves, so they become selfish, sycophantic, and, and stop caring about anything that actually really matters and stop being curious about the mysteries of the universe. Sounds like a perfect bunch of scientific dupes to me. We'll be right back after the break at the Show.com. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337-531 to order your copy now. Hi, this is Wendy Adams from Lightwaves Radio Inner Circle. I want you to think for a moment. What would it be like if there was no more Vinnie Eastwood? No more shows, no more videos, no more support, no more champion of the underdog, no more humor to help us get through. Just no more Vinny Eastwood. We need to understand that what he does is for all of us, 
for the greater good. He's all about spreading the truth of his country and many countries. And there is a misconception. People seem to believe that he is living high on the hog, so to speak. Well, the truth is, he isn't. I'm asking you, please reach into your hearts. Go to the thevinnieeastwoodshow.com and make a small donation. Any donation is welcome. Just do what you can, but do something. The world needs Vinnie Eastwood, and now he needs you. Thank you. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Show.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Tales from the Crypt Beneath the Vatican, where we have lots of small boys that we sacrifice. <laughs> yes. Um, this is the darkest two hours in talk radio. Like a like a like a like a a, a, a ghost story around the campfire of a radio show. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, for those of you who are listening live on air, which is all of you, and those of you who are watching on the YouTube right now, you'll notice that there's a bit of like scary light around my face, like in, like in a ghost story. You know how you put the the uh, flashlight under your chin or something like that. But check this out: it's this LED light panel that uh, one of my listeners uh, in Australia, Werner, sent me, and uh, he sent me a, f- a few pieces of equipment now. But this puppy is great, man! Look at look at it: very very big, fat, bright little LED light panel that screws directly onto my tripod. So, oh my god, baby, we have light in the dark now for the Vinnie Eastwood show and uh, and Mr. News when I'm out uh, covering protests at night. In fact, uh, I will be going out to a protest tonight, in fact, to use this puppy. All right? Uh, out, out in GI, Glenn Innes, for those of you who aren't uh, locals, <clears throat> there are a whole bunch of state houses that were built way back in the day for all the returning veterans and, th- and things of that nature who paid their rent uh, to the government, have paid off those houses more than anybody could ever conceive of and made a heck of a lot of money for the government. And now that the government's um, thinking, you know what, we, we really could do have to kind of think about selling out to the World Bank and IMF and enslaving absolutely everybody and taking away every bit of rights and liberties and, and, uh, and, and services that they ever had under the government that they all got used to and got dependent on. So now we're going to basically put them in abject poverty. That's what's going on on they're gonna go go out and kick all those people out of their houses tonight so i'm gonna be there and documenting that shiite muslim in full living quality color and i want to thank werner personally uh for for sending me this puppy here um because literally without this piece of equipment this one little piece of equipment tonight i wouldn't be able to see anything through the camera lens that's how tiny the lens is. The bigger the, your camera lens is, the more light it lets in. So if you are going out and you're filming um, protests or, or things like that, at night, uh, make sure you have uh, something to light it up. A, um, if, if this kind of uh, thing is not your deal, like if you can't afford like a big LED panel or something like that, which has been sent, well, I can't afford it, it was sent to me, but <laughs> um, a flashlight. Just, just a normal um, uh, LED flashlight. Their, their batteries last for, for a long time. Um, if that doesn't work, also uh, work lights, hanging work lights. You can get them from uh, hardware stores and, and, and things like that. And they're, uh, they're battery powered. Get rechargeable batteries so you can keep using them over and over again. Um, that sort of thing. They might be a little bit more expensive, but basically it'll save you money over the over the long period of time. So there's my little bit of uh, Vinnie Eastwood uh, rabid dog uh, uh, in, in your face filmmaker uh, advice for today. Now, Matt Presti and Robert O'Tay are my guests today. 
And uh, what were we talking about over the break? Oh yes, atheism. <laughs> now, isn't isn't it uh, quite nice and hilarious and ironic? That atheists will uh, claim that science is the be-all and end-all, basically, and uh, they they are basically unaware that the whole scientific principles and everything that they believe in was actually created by, you guessed it, the Vatican. (laughs) 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 Ah, You dumbasses. Ah, Oh, the stupidity. Or at least that's my perspective on it. Anyway, my sister's an atheist. I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she might be coming around. Well, um, it, it, it's just kind of like this. You all believe what, what makes you feel comfortable, whereas I believe in what makes me the least comfortable because I know it's probably most likely to be the truth. For instance, if um, I don't want to believe that there's a ruthless criminal sociopathic bunch of scumbags that control pretty much everything um, that goes on in this world and they want to kill all of us... It makes perfect sense to me because I certainly don't want to believe it. Whatever I don't want to believe, that's what I invariably wind up believing because that's what the evidence suggests. And that is what uh, the difference between um, having a belief that's set in stone and just having an acceptance of, of somebody's uh, information. They'll put it out in front of you if it makes sense, if it is uh, backed up, scientific evidence, blah, 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 blah. Sweet, sweet, fine. I'll accept that. I'll pop it into my little goodie bag. All right, kind of right there with a little psychological castration type thing. <clears throat> but the rest of it, on the other hand, some people, if you find something that is very uncomfortable, you will refuse to believe it, even to the point where you'll wind up hurting and attacking other people who are trying to inform you so that you're not going around in a uh, sort of moronic myopia for the entirety of your life. And and, uh, you guys, you've had uh, a lot of dealings, I would imagine, with people of that sort of uh, moronic, myopic mindset. Uh, More than you can even know. (laughs) More morons. (laughs) More than you know, um, and there's some of the worst people too. Some of the most spiritless and and drone and droned like people I've ever encountered, and they always argue, you know, science is fact and science is law, and you know anything you have to say that's against the law is not to be listened to. Well, that's not very scientific, now is it? Wouldn't you think science, which means which comes from the Latin uh, CO means means literally to know, not to sense, but to know. And the problem with these people is they don't know anything. You know, they know whatever they read and they hold that to be the truth. And they claim that, you know, experimental reductionism, empirical reductionism is what validates that. But um, Robert, would you care to chime in on this at any point? Please feel free uh, to. Sure. Well, you know, uh, religion, um, science is a modern religion, really. I mean, uh, you have your high priests of predictivity. They're the scientists that run the racket. Um, You have to have faith in their theories. You have to have faith in the mathematics. And you have to have faith in their thought experiments. And, um, you know, basically, it's no different than a religion because uh, a lot lot of this is not even... um, based on reality it's based on people's guesses i think it's it's like it's like any belief right your belief once it's challenged if you've built up a worldview about it and it's something that uh, that you're comfortable in like your little cushion bubble of ignorance or, or, or whatever somebody comes and bursts that bubble you don't accept the fact that your bubble is burst and, and realize that you now have to fend for yourself because there's no bubble to protect you or your mind or your emotions or your spirituality or, any, or, or anything like that. And so instead of just accepting the reality that everything's now changed and you have to figure out how to, how to learn, how to, how to love, how to eat again or whatever, kind of like it, it's, it's like a lifelong amnesia. Instead of doing that, you attack the person who tells you these things which challenge your worldview it's it's a reptilian brain response because you'll notice that these people give those responses it doesn't take it doesn't take very long it's pretty much instant just boom i'm attacking you you're a moron uh you're crazy these are fringe uh, theory science and, and 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 the same kind of mindset that produces that sort of um attacking instant um response 
is actually the virtually the only mindset that psychopaths operate under. Okay, it's it's a um, it's a very specific part of the brain, the uh, the reptilian part um, right down here in your lower cortex. That's where your fight and your flight mechanisms are, are are a part of. And so, what I found is interesting is that intellectual concepts can be perceived by people as a real threat. Isn't that interesting? It used to be that this part of the brain would, would activate once you see a bear or a lion or a tiger. Oh my! And then you and then you'd uh, get the adrenaline rush and you'd get that rage. You get the strength preparing to either kill that bear or run as fast as you can away from it. Now you don't even need to put a threat into somebody's place. You simply need to challenge their current worldview, and they'll still see you as a bear or a, or a tiger or anything like that. And they'll either stop the conversation right there, run for the run for the hills, so that they don't have to deal with this threat to their worldview, or they'll start ch- coming at you with spears and chucking rocks and 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 trying to throw nets over you and all of this kind of stuff when you're not even a threat. You're not even there. It doesn't even exist. You're talking about something that's intellectual, something that's a concept, something you can't stab with a knife. (laughs) Which belies the point that these people don't even know what they believe. Okay? They think they do. And 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 they feel comfortable that they think that they know what's going on. But the fact is they really don't. That's why they get so upset. That's why they attack you. That's why they abuse you and call you names. Because they ain't got nothing else. That's real Truly. sad. Yeah. Yeah, that's been our experience. They, we've come under a great deal of attack for trying to basically open their minds and show them that, you know, the, the science that they believe in is flawed. And yet, you know, they get so hysterical. Most of them are atheists and agnostics. That's, the, that's one of the big problems. And when you try to communicate Russellian science to them, it's creator-centered and bounded. And uh, maybe I should explain that really quickly. Um, in Russellian science, oh, we don't. Okay, no, 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 no. We're kind of uh, coming to break okay. now. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got one more hour, uh, so keep that keep that on the back burner, and we'll come straight back to it uh, after the break. And I would like to take some callers on this as well, ladies and gentlemen. Two one eight double three nine eighty five twenty five. That's two one eight. Double three nine eighty five twenty five. If you want to ring in and, and and discuss these topics, I would also probably like to be hearing from uh, the Greek as well. If he's if he's listening in, because I want his perspective on this. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Two one eight double three nine eighty five twenty five. Matt Presty and Robert Ote are my guests. Back in a minute. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Hi, this is Wendy Adams from Lightwaves Radio Inner Circle. I want you to think for a moment. What would it be like if there was no more Vinnie Eastwood? No more shows, no more videos, no more support, no more champion of the underdog, no more humor to help us get through. Just no more Vinnie Eastwood. We need to understand that what he does is for all of us, for the greater good. He's all about spreading the truth of his country and many countries. And there is a misconception. People seem to believe that he is living high on the hog, so to speak. Well, the truth is, he isn't. I'm asking you, please reach into your hearts. Go to the VinnieEastwoodShow.com and make a small donation. Any donation is welcome. Just do what you can, but do something. The world needs Vinnie Eastwood, and now he needs you. Thank you. 
Do you realise every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Show.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show that's all about solidarity, unity, all those good things, and scumbaggery. And uh, it's the Vinny Eastwood Show, hour number two, fastest two hours in talk radio. My guests, Matt Presty and Robert Ote. Now, uh, Robert, I um, I interrupted you there when we were coming to break from the final segment. You had a point to finish up? Yeah. Uh, am I breaking up? No, you're no. I, I okay, think good. I think you're um, you're very happily married. <laughs> Actually, I'm divorced, man. But but that's all cool. Um, yeah, what I was trying to say about uh, Russellian science is it explains what you know. These we have these terms: gravity, light, electricity, magnetism, energy, space. All these kind of terms. They're they're completely unknown in academia what they actually are, and. In Russellian science, it's explained. And for instance, magnetism, it's not a force. In, in Russellian science, there's only one force. It's electricity that either unwinds matter or it unwinds matter. It compresses or expands. Magnetism is actually planes of stillness, uh, these cathode planes of stillness, which control the electrical motions that give form to our electric universe. So... Um, Basically, we have a, a magnetic universe of stillness that has complete control over our electric universe. Now, nowadays, we have a lot of the, the findings are being confirmed by, I'm sure you've heard about the electric universe paradigm, uh, thunderbolts.info, for instance, the work of David Talbot. You haven't heard any of these folks? No, man. Uh, in fact, uh, okay. are, are they still alive? Because if they are, I can oh, get yeah. them on the show, yeah. unless they've been electrocuted well, no. to death or something. Well, we, we would uh, basically be contradicting some of the work because they're, they're only looking at half of the, the, um, the equation, half of, half of reality. What they do is they focus on the effects and they never talk about the causes. And uh, so they have basically proved that I, with their dissenting science that you know, this is not a gravity-based universe as Newton and, and Einstein in academia claim it is. You know, it's basically an electric universe. Everything's controlled electrically. So uh, they have done a lot of work. They've been able to prove a lot of the astrophysics in the laboratory. They've been able to replicate all these things that we see out in the cosmos. But unfortunately, these people also are afraid to deal with the creator. Uh, you know, it's like they have to stick to this agnostic, atheistic, kind of sterilized, sanitized view of reality. And if you try to mention the creator, then they, they kind of lose it. You know what I mean? So uh, they've got half the story, whereas Walter Russell's work is about the entire story. It's about causes and effects. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me see if I understand this correctly. Sure. Catholic Church, the people who believe in the Creator, come up with a um, basically a false science paradigm to uh, basically distract people uh, from how the science really works. Even though, if they told people how science really works, it would lead them towards the creator. Now, I would act under the assumption that the reason for that being is that religion is not about bringing people to God. Not about bringing people to spiritual salvation. It's about mind control. Absolutely. And it's not just the Catholic Church. I mean, you know, Newton, I don't think he was any part of any intentional conspiracy, but there was, you know, some logical fallacies, some basic assumptions that he made, for instance, about his universal law of gravitation. Uh, you know, that's based on the idea, the assumption that the moon is like a cannonball. 
you know, and but the moon has nothing to do with a cannonball. The moon has its own center of gravity. It's not like a, something shot out of a cannon. So basically, the very foundations of the universal law of gravitation, which has been applied to all of astronomy, in all their predictions, all their their guesses, all of their quantifications and qualifications of the cosmos out there, that fundamental assumption is false. So everything based on that. And the other, the other assumption about that would be when they measure these distances to stars and stuff, they measure them in straight lines and they use trigonometry. Well, there's no such thing as a straight path in space. It's impossible. All paths in space are curved. You can't get from one planet or one star on a straight line anywhere. It's impossible. Every single, curve, every single path in the universe is curved. It's a spiral path. Is that because nothing stays still in in the universe exactly. like like basically exactly. every every planet is uh, rotating around a sun every sun is rotating around a galaxy every galaxy is rotating around what a, a, a red dwarf Truly. star every, red dwarf star cluster Truly. or something like that and so on yes. and so on and so forth Exactly. Exactly. Even at the atomic level, the same thing's happening because everything is based on spiraling phi. Oh my God! Is the, that explains go. that explains Barack Obama's cabinet. They're spiraling <laughs> around him like. A <laughs> You've seen that then? How his head spirals on the top, his hair. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get myself one of those little Barack Obama bobblehead things that you have, that you put in your car, sort of thing, yeah. so that whenever whenever I'm driving over speed bumps or going over like that, his little head bobbles, and he goes, "Yes, we can enslave the American people." Right, exactly. But everything in nature is based on the spiraling phi. You can see it in your nose, your ears, your eyes, even the foreskin of your penis. I mean, it's everything is spiraling. You know, the shells, horns, atoms, galaxies, suns, every Trees. single thing. Phylotaxis of leaves. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Because even the only motions are spiral motions. Debt spirals out of control as well. <laughs> exactly in a <laughs> fake monetary system yeah if well, see, it was see, a real see, that's funny. system it wouldn't be even fake systems adhere to the spiral um thing don't they well sure if it's a 15 to 1 you know uh uh fractional banking system you know obviously it's, it's absurd you know they print money out of thin air yeah yeah well you know i was i was wondering does the universe actually have the ability to create things out of thin air in, in terms of creationism like that as well and, and i'm guessing not uh but like i was thinking i was thinking about this the other day and um a guy named tom brown he showed me a, a video presentation i think you can um look at it on my youtube channel uh tom thomas j brown alternative spectra of knowledge or something like that and um he showed us a a, a time lapse of a uh, red dwarf star cluster and what happens is red dwarf star clusters they look sort of like a spiral except instead of um sort of blue and white light like you'd expect from our our own galaxy kind of thing the milky way it's uh, it's actually a red and white light and there's a white light in the middle and it starts to get bigger and bigger as it comes around the spiral and then it exits the spiral and that light has actually grown the whole way throughout the spiral and emerged as a fully formed galaxy. And so I was thinking to myself, that means that entire galaxies are being created all the time, right? Yes. Mat yeah. Matter, electricity, uh, everything like that is being created uh, not entirely dissimilar to how um, a sperm and an egg will create a cellular divide and create an entire, um, an entirely new life form. Um, does that exactly. does that mean Every, it, yeah. that the um, that that star clusters and things like that also have a sexuality and a reproductive Absolutely. organs and, and things of that nature? Absolutely, yeah. And the quasars are birthed from galaxies. Quasars are baby galaxies. Everything in nature conforms to the same thing. It's born. It grows to maturity, grows old, it dies, and is reborn again. Everything's cyclical. And yes, at the very foundations of Russellian science, what happens is, is that the, the inert gases, they basically create the, they are the, the seeds of every octave of matter. They, they're the substance which creates all elements. In the inert gases, what happens is the, that the cathode planes of cubes, the, the, the white light, of eternity of the creator's magnetic universe is split into blue female and red male lights who seek each other to balance each other out through twin opposing vortices so they're trying to find rest in, in in each other basically what happens in a sun is you have a blue and a red vortex connecting each other 
and meeting each other to create a spherical system like the sun, but they can't go past the equator. They each have a hemisphere. And that's why an, uh, the, the nuclear theory of the atom is, of course, absurd, because in that you would have electrons rotating in every single possible plane. And that's not the way nature works. Nature works by spinning electrical rings, which remain parallel to the equators. They're controlled by the poles. Those poles are gravity poles. They're not magnetic poles. They control the spiraling rings of these twin opposing vortices that give form to all spheres and ring systems in the universe. Mm. So is there, there's a mother and father sort of element. You, you talked about how blue and red light, basically the blue, the, the blue, That's it. and and you know how uh, traditionally like uh, we'll color boys' rooms blue, but blue's actually the female energy of the universe, isn't it? Exactly. So what happens is the the creator is sexless. You know, I mean, this these these man made gods are all man or woman or whatever. That's garbage. I mean, sex conditions are completely a creation of the electric universe. The magnetic universe is totally sexless. It, we take that one magnetic light of eternity of the creator's eternal universe, and it is split electrically via the inert gases into a bipolar universe of male and female, red and blue lights. So, so what, that, that what, explains with paint. What, what do you what do you get if you mix red and blue? You get green, do you don't you? All different shades, depending on what the propensity or the preponderance of one over the other. In Russellian science, there are nine octaves of matter that create all the elements, and each octave has seven tones. The, the tones, as it prolates to the 90 degree spherical, that the spherical system only exists at the wave field amplitude at 90 degrees. On both sides, there are three sets of ring systems. On the first half, the, the male is dominant. On the second, the female is dominant. So you're inwinding to create, you're oblating towards a sphere as, as the male is dominant. And as, the, as the female takes over, you're, um, you're oblating out. I should say you're prolating towards a sphere and oblating out to the next octave, where the next set of inert gas rings create a whole other octave of elements. Well, I was just I was just thinking, how can how can you reconcile this? Like, does this give us some clues as to the creation of just the Earth? I mean, let's let's say that this is a um, this is the fact one hundred percent. And, and and leave all your uh, disbelief of, of of it at the door. Does that mean like uh, let's say Earth was just kind of given birth to by um, the sun, right? Just kind of, just kind of like it. Yes. It it, it, um, it was created inside it um, like a fetus, curled up, yes. and then was born out, and it was and it was still hot or whatever, and then it goes into the position of Mercury, and then another baby comes out, and then Mercury gets pushed gets pushed back, and it becomes exactly. Venus, and so on all and the, so all forth. All the planets keep getting pushed outwards. Yes. Right. Right. So yes, it, 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 and, it's and, it's and, similar to um, a family situation where basically um, the eldest child will will wind up all the all the way out at the end, kind, exactly. kind of thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's um, what Walter said in his writings was that there's one law for all bodies in the universe. And if you look at a child, it's born, it's small. You know, look at the planets before Earth that are closer to the sun, they're smaller. And they have very, their centers become very tightly wound. So as they grow, though, and mature, they move farther away from home, as children do. I mean, it's it's so just seamless this the science is very seamless it doesn't leave a bunch of holes in it for all these flaky theories to pop up like string theory to the 500th plank and you know uh, event horizons and yeah. dark See, matter i've you know. always said for a long time that if somebody's trying to explain something to you and they explain it in a convoluted way that you can't understand it means that they don't know what they're talking about Right. Exactly, and if I if I may just finish the, the the cycle of a planet, as they grow further, they grow bigger, and what happens after around the fourth octave, which is about where Earth is, planets begin to unwind their centers. Their centers become hollow, just like trees become hollow when they get older, and eventually crack over and and begin to rot back into the Earth. So what you have is the centers of planets expand outward, the death cycle takes over, they become more gaseous and less solid, and eventually the gases are eventually thrown off in rings. The, 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 the matter, the, the, the cores of the planets are unwound in rings around the planets, and rings are the sign of aging in nature. You know, a tree has many rings as an old tree. 
So the same with planets. And eventually the rings even dissipate and you have planets like Neptune and Uranus, which are even older and are and to the point where you eventually get out far enough and everything becomes gas and the planet just dissolves. And then it's inwound again into the life of another star system or possibly back into its own sun. So this 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 is a cyclic, seamless universe, not one of um, you know big bang explosion. And uh, two scientists said recently in Sweden, I think it was, that they their new theory shows that time is eventually going to stop and everything will freeze to death, and that will be the end of the universe. We'll just blink right. out, you know. Yeah, and I just I find that kind of stuff well, ludicrous. That, that, that's total BS. I mean, ever look at it? I mean, just from what you've said here, uh, just from what I've been able to ascertain from uh, from all the knowledge that I've been exposed to over my life in the universe, there's no such thing as a natural straight line and no such thing as a natural barrier. Okay, so how can you ever come to the end or fall off the edge of something that has no straight lines and no barriers? End of the Big Bang, right there. That's all it takes. Just yeah, and that's like the, the flat logic. Earth theory applied to the universe. You get to the yeah. edge of the 13.8 billion years, and you fall off into nothingness, which doesn't exist. Right. Ah! So it's, <laughs> welcome, welcome to your view of the universe, science people. You believe in a flat Earth, flat universe, sure. literally. You know, well, In look academia, at it. Look at it this way: of... they've gone past the point of thinking that it's on the back of a giant tortoise, at least. There you go. You know, there's some room <laughs> for improvement. Right. Well, academia has a set of laws for the small and another set for the large, and that's absolutely absurd. It's seamless. There's the 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 micro and the macro are the same. Everything's the same. Yeah. Everything's the same. It means you actually got not that much to learn, and if you don't have that much to learn, it means, well, basically. Nobody can really claim to be really superior in, uh, uh, to you in terms of it. And this is another element that I think that these people uh, in the scientific community who don't listen to anybody else basically and think that they're the be-all and end-all and they know how the universe was created and they know what God is, blah, 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 blah. These people think they know everything, okay? And, and whoever thinks that they know everything, okay, is either completely and utterly insane or drastically misinformed, Right? There's always something to learn. There's always something to know. And whenever you start refusing to accept new information, refusing to accept new knowledge and new ideas, that's when you've violated the entire scientific principle in, this, in, uh, in its entirety, isn't it? Because Indeed. if your hypothesis doesn't stack up towards the evidence, you change your hypothesis, not destroy the evidence, you idiots. <laughs> okay? You can always tell when somebody's full of crap, man, is when they don't follow their own words and their own guiding principles. You know for a fact that they've been corrupted and they're not really there to do anything honest or decent. We'll be right back after the break at the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Hi, this is Wendy Adams from Lightwaves Radio Inner Circle. I want you to think for a moment. What would it be like if there was no more Vinnie Eastwood? No more shows, no more videos, no more support, no more champion of the underdog, no more humor to help us get through. Just no more Vinnie Eastwood. We need to understand that what he does is for all of us, for the greater good. He's all about spreading the truth of his country and many countries. And there is a misconception. People seem to believe that he is living high on the hog, so to speak. Well, the truth is, he isn't. I'm asking you, please reach into your hearts. Go to the VinnieEastwoodShow.com and make a small donation. Any donation is welcome. Just do what you can, but do something. The world needs Vinnie Eastwood, and now he needs you. Thank you.
Do you realise every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable, and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Vinnie Eastwood Show.com. It's a brand new world. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. I'm a brand new man, living in a brand new world with a brand new radio show. And um, those of you who have been listening for quite some time, uh, I'm not sure if anybody's been listening to us since day one, but uh, if you if you have been listening since day one, this show is now two years old. Two years, baby. Now, if anybody can point a stick at a New Zealander who's got an American-based talk, talk radio show that's on real AMFM affiliates, that's been doing it for more than a year, up to two years at least, that's actually accomplished it. Anybody? Anyway, No. Because <laughs> I'm unique. I am very, very happy to do this job because, by goodness, nobody else is doing it. And if nobody else is going to save the world, I have to, okay? That's what I figured out, and that's what I decided to do when I started out uh, going out to protests and ambushing the Prime Minister and uh, and asking the tough questions that the media just freaking won't, because they're just too blimmin' myopic and moronic. Now, <clears throat> speaking of myopic and moronic, we were talking over the break about uh, trolls, all right, paid trolls, you know, the kinds that live under bridges and, uh, and, and ask your goats to pay money, that kind of stuff, and they sit, and they sit, at, their, um, they sit at their computers with the little keyboard warrior type things, like they wear fingerless gloves to type because it makes them look more badass and stuff, you know? <laughs> God, that's a, cra- that's a classic image, I'm going to get it. Okay, but anyway, these people, man, they're so aggressive, and they got nothing, okay? They got nothing. In, in fact, you were telling me, uh, 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 Robert's the only one left at the moment. Uh, uh, Matt seems to have dropped off for some reason, having connection, connectivity issues. We'll try and get him back up um, soon enough. But uh, basically, uh, there was we were talking about over the break about how just how pleasurable it is to block these people. It's like um, if these people are like, Vinny's an intellectual lightweight. Uh, Vinny is uh, fat and stupid. Vinny's not funny. Uh, you know, all these, all these kind of things. Just basically, they've got nothing to contribute to the to the conversation except insulting you, so you just block them. And um, don't you have like an extensive list of, of blocked people, Robert? Uh, right now, I have about 756, I believe. Oh my so God! <laughs> Over the last four years, I've gained quite a few of these these trolls of you know come in for their attacks. Yeah, yeah, and and the reason why you block them instead of replying to them and trying to convince them or anything, because it takes a lot less time and it's actually a lot more effective at getting them to shush. All right. Ultimately, exactly. Ultimately, yeah. that's all you want. You don't want to convince them of anything because you know obviously if they were capable of being convinced, they wouldn't be a paid troll, would they? Not at all, and they're they're just there with their ad hominem attacks. They have nothing. They never address the issues at hand. They just attack you, you know. And they and they the, they they fantasize about who you are. They project all these things onto you, like you're some sort of religious nut or something. I don't have anything to do with religion, but I talk about the Creator, so therefore they think I have a religion. I don't support any religions. You don't need a religion to to know about the Creator. Mm-hmm. You know, right? Yeah, I mean. It- didn't didn't the didn't all these religious books and everything like that say that you don't need a church that you can have a personal relationship with the creator? Exactly, we have a creation. How can a creation exist without a creator? Yeah. Any more than a painting can exist without a painter. You know? Yeah, yeah. and it's any absurd. more than a, than a, than a baby can exist without a mother or father. Exactly. 
Exactly. The whole universe is based on the same thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think we're, we're about to get uh, Matt Presty back in. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll hope the uh, AFR, if, you, if you're uh, listening at the board up there, you can get him in. Matt, are you there? Yes, I am. Technical difficulties. Uh, Almost technology. Yeah, well, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, now, what we were talking about, we are talking about trolls, you've got 750 of them blocked there, and th- this mindset of the troll, this mindset of the uh, the person who, um, who who essentially has nothing going for them in their lives, has no friends, has nothing better to do, quite literally, than sit around and uh, attack other people, calling them names, and not listen to any of the concepts, not address any of the issues, and ultimately, these people are slowing up the evolution of mankind, both spiritually, intellectually, and of course, in their in their own cases, because they need to never get up off the computer or anything like that, and are just eating bags of Doritos and two-minute noodles and aspartame-flavored <laughs> Coca-Cola and, and, and vaccinated until they're getting used. You know, these, these kind of people, you, you also notice that they're very unhealthy, okay, um, and you can always tell very unhealthy people by people who make you feel stressed out simply by being in their presence, simply by reading their comments. It, it kind of makes you angry or upset. And and you notice that, that that anger and upsetness is actually on their part. And when they tell you something, it actually transfers across to you. Me being a happy, healthy, decent person, I, I see that as not something that's comfortable, not something that's cool, not something that I actually want to uh, deal with kind of ever so it's it's a simple matter of block and i never hear that person never hear from that particular person again but you still have to keep blocking them again and again and again and again um and i think this only happened twice where i've had somebody who will literally create another account after i've blocked their first one with a new email and a new name and everything just so that they can come back to the same email and um and reply to me and abuse me more and then it's a simple matter of block again so they've wasted all their time creating that new account (laughs) (laughs) that's the truth you got that down yeah man it takes a heck of a lot more effort this is what i've found out it takes more effort to destroy somebody else than it is to improve yourself (laughs) <laughs> Certainly, it's it's the old as David Ike said. It's the uh, sheep dogs, you know. They uh, they try to keep you in the pen, and they keep you from having any original thoughts. They don't want you to think originally. They don't want you to be authentic, as Michael Desarian has said many times. A, a lack of authenticity. I mean, Robert and I created an effect just just on account of this, because we've been a- accused of. Uh, uh, suffering from the so-called Dunning-Kruger effect. So uh, we, we wrote an effect that they actually suffer from. Robert, would you care to uh, share that definition? No, uh, I don't have it with me. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, Basically, you know, there's two types of trolls that I see. There's you know, the brainwashed ones that actually believe what they're saying, and then there's the paid ones. There are people that are paid. I, I understand it's forty dollars per comment box in order to be disinfo trolls and to sabotage, especially you know like sites like uh, the Lunar Landing and all that, the Apollo program. Those are some of the most virulent trolls I've ever seen in my entire life. Or they, they might uh, defend Carl Sagan videos or or you know Stephen Hawking videos. Anybody that challenges the dominant paradigm, they'll go in and just you know massive ad hominem attacks. You know, so okay, I've, I, I've know, found. I found the effect. This is uh, an observation from Robert and I, and uh, it's called the Ote Presti effect because we've witnessed it in all these trolls. And basically what, what it is, the Ote Presti effect is a cognitive bias in which unskilled individuals suffer from inferiority complexes, repeated and remembered authoritative jargon, a heavy need for entitlement and praise, submission to any authority, Inability to think original thoughts, atheism, hubris, debunked theories, a one-sided heat-death entropy universe created by the Catholic priest Lamate, lack of authenticity, and anti-autodidactism, which is, in other words, uh, self-teaching. Yeah. An- anti-teaching yourself to think. They, they can't think original thoughts they does, have does to think mean, things that have been laid out for them does that mean it's a um it's a, it's a lack of questioning in, in indeed in its entirety like um instead of attempting to uh have the baseline of i will start questioning until i find the answer it's i'm finding the answer and i never need to question again 
Yeah, or I've repeated and remembered the answer from college. You know, that's one of the things that, that is most destroying the ability to create free energy devices is this belief in a one-way heat death second law of thermodynamics entropy universe that this universe exploded it's running down its heat all the theories that have come from it are dysfunctional and no we can never create free energy as long as we believe that this is the case what Walter Russell does is smashes through the one-way uh, paradigm with a two-way cyclic motion based on all bodies in nature you know you can look at your own human body and and see that it, it breathes in and breathes out but what science says is that the the universe is exhalation only that there is no inhalation anywhere so what we're doing is teaching the exact science of russell on the secret of light.com and feandft.com which is robert's website and um, I would implore everybody to check it out. I mean, science based on nature. Science know, based on nature. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got to say, I got to say about the trolls, you know, uh, at first it really put me off. You know, I, I started, yeah. my blood would boil. You know, I'd get all freaked out and I just want to, you know, reach through the, uh, you know, grab the little chicken neck through the, through the screen of the computer and ring it, you know. But uh, really what it's become is like a challenge, you know, because if we're going to take this stuff on the road and never go lecture, I mean, I, I appreciate this. I've had all these things thrown at me and, you know, it's been like, uh, you know, weight training in a sense, you know, going out and just dealing with these people and taking all their insults and all their, their crappy little, uh, you know, attacks and debunking them, taking them apart piece by piece. So in a, in a sense, I've actually profited, you know, so thank you. Thank you for our all the trolling you people have done to me. Well, and it's the nature of um, of of bad of, of scumbaggery, essentially. That the worse mm -hmm, that, that mm -hmm. the worse that they are to you, um, the more improved you become, and you become better soldiers than they are. Essentially, like this is this is an information um, uh, conflict that we're talking about here. And I, I completely and utterly understand that um, that anger transference. Like, if you have some somebody who uh, essentially has no idea who you are or what you do or what they're talking about or anything like that, and they come from a place of uh, just this endless, mind-numbing rage kind of thing, they put their comments on YouTube, you actually get that rage transferred to you. You know, you feel yes. as they felt. Have you noticed that? Yes, absolutely. Right now, and all they have is an idiot box indoctrination. You know, they're just parodying what they've heard on the idiot box. So how in, how know, do we academia. how do we transmute that though? Because they've got the anger, they've got the rage, and the, and they seem to be capable of producing it right uh, in in an endless yeah. supply. So I've got coolness, and I've got intellect, and I'm capable of producing that. And I found that it, it's not possible to actually reconcile with them to turn their rage into intellect and being and just being cool and nice and friendly and everything like that. It doesn't work because they're they're, well, they're not programmed. It, it's kind of like a, a broadcasting system. They're not programmed to receive, only to broadcast. Exactly. Well, the paid trolls for sure. You're never going to get. They're they're getting paid to do this. They're going to take the opposite side of whatever you say. But you're right. There are some people out there that are, you know, if you approach them with an open heart and you and you try to to be nice to them, I mean, uh, you can win them over. I've definitely done that also. Mm, it does happen, and and that's the thing. Yeah, You've, it does. You, you you do have to kind of um, take people. Um, almost from a non-judgmental perspective, like somebody will come on and insult you or whatever, and I, I find that investing just a small amount of time to just say, well, actually, no, it's this, this, and this, and, and, and so on and so forth, thank you for your comment, and you try to be really nice and, and loving and caring and actually try to help them understand. Now, they'll either have two two reactions. They'll either be capable of receiving that love and, and that integrity and that, and that caring and that intellectual honesty, and they will um, instantly... Like, you've seen people do those complete 180s on um, on yeah. YouTube comments. Where you just you just one comment, and then they pull a total 180, then you're on your side, and they'll be yes. a listener of yours and a follower of your work for ages to come because you took that effort, right? The other people, on the other hand, who keep arguing are not in any way asking questions and are only making statements and it doesn't matter what you say to them they keep arguing back those people are essentially simply there to waste your time and, and it, to make they're money. not capable because they're not <laughs> capable they're not capable of receiving any positive no. information that you're putting out so essentially it's kind of like you're putting um energy into a vacuum all right it's like here's the best let's say black holes that exist 
what these what arguing with these kind of troll people is like trying to uh, light up a black hole by sending suns into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly. just not just not going to happen exactly well if you well, want to take it take it um uh, apart with russell terminology here nature polarizes and depolarizes all her life forms um somebody that is dying is in a depolarized acidic condition and that is a mere effect they try to mirror that depolarization of their own selves and and their uh you know death state onto us but people who think positive and happy thoughts and remain happy, who are bountiful of, of, and aware of the beauty of nature's bounty, create polarizing conditions of the body. And people who are angry actually serve, are, are actually serving to kill themselves with their own thoughts. And that your thoughts literally create reality. This is a consciousness universe, you know, in my humble opinion. And... Um, Based on your your polarization state, if you're polarized, you're generating life. If you're depolarized, you're devitalized and degenerating or radiating. And um, that's pretty much how I look at you know the thinking process. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and the thing is, those people are what we're talking about are, are what's known as toxic individuals. Now, if you wanted to be healthy and happy, ladies and gentlemen, how much toxicity are you supposed to crave? How much toxicity are you supposed to allow into your life and to try and keep there and make an effort to keep toxic? The answer is none. Purge the toxins is what you should do. We'll be right back after the break at thevinnieastwoodshow.com. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 Three three seven five three one to order your copy now. Hi, this is Wendy Adams from Lightwaves Radio Inner Circle. I want you to think for a moment. What would it be like if there was no more Vinny Eastwood? No more shows, no more videos, no more support, no more champion of the underdog, no more humor to help us get through. Just no more Vinny Eastwood. We need to understand that what he does is for all of us, for the greater good. He's all about spreading the truth of his country and many countries. And there is a misconception. People seem to believe that he is living high on the hog, so to speak. Well, the truth is, he isn't. I'm asking you, please reach into your hearts. Go to the com and make a small donation. Any donation is welcome. Just do what you can. But do something. The world needs Vinnie Eastwood, and now he needs you. Thank you. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Show.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the lighter side of genocide, because if you don't have a sense of humour in this in this movement, you're probably a troll. My very special guests <laughs> are Matt Presty and Robert O'Tay. And we were talking about the trolls um, uh, over, the in- over the break as well. And, and you know, here's an interesting thing. The things that you hate and the things that you love are the things that are uh, something that can infinitely interest you and, and hold your attention that you can keep discussing endlessly. 
This is why trolls never shut up. This is also why truthers never shut up. Because <laughs> we're both intimately involved, incentivized, and tested, and qualified to keep doing what we're doing. Now, I'm qualified as somebody who uh, cares about other human beings, what their opinions are, what the things are, who cares about whatever is actually happening in the universe and all of that kind of stuff. But I don't care to the point where I'm going to actually hurt people who disagree with me or attack them um, consistently without any thought of actually wanting to help them, right? So here's the diggity do. If you're having a conversation in public with a troll of some description, you will notice that you're not actually just talking to them. You are actually talking to everybody else who reads that email list or that comment thread on YouTube and things of that nature. So if you've got one person that you are that you, as an honest person with integrity and, and kindness and love and, and, and straight up wanting to get to the facts of the matter... If you're arguing against somebody who's saying, you're a paid agent, you're a New World Order shill, you're a Zionist stooge, you're an, you're an agent of Israel, you're <laughs> so on and so forth, it becomes very clear to everybody who's reading that email thread, just the one who's fracking crazy out of that argument, okay? And then a whole bunch of people who are reading it will suddenly start contacting you, the honest person with decency and integrity, and they will start saying, you know what, I agree with you. But often they won't agree with you in public, they'll agree with you in private, because they know, or at least they feel, that if they come out and uh, and become part of this really disgusting ugly conversation in general, um, that they'll start getting attacked by these Cointel Pro trolls that you're debunking. And that's very, very true. They attack anybody and everybody who doesn't agree with them. And, but as a direct result, anybody and everybody who watches, listens, and reads these threads suddenly realize who the real enemy is, who the real idiot is, and who you should really be listening to, and who the honest one is, and who the liar is. Okay? So, having those arguments with these trolls can sometimes be a waste of time. True. But it might only be a waste of time for you. Anybody else who becomes privy to that conversation will, in fact, benefit from it in some way, shape, or form. It just depends whether or not you've got the time at that particular day or whatever to uh, uh, debunk said criminal scumbaggery, uh, lying, uh, uh, psychopathic, uh, vaccinated, uh, 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 aspartame swilling, uh, beer drinking, uh, 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 you know, those kind of people. If you can bother debunking them, go right ahead, you know, spend a little bit of time, but don't waste your life debunking them because you'll never get anywhere, all right? The best thing to do if somebody's trying to mess you around or screw up your life or anything like that is to feel less messed up and start improving your own life. And then you realize how much of these people actually got. What have they got backing them? You realize that they got nothing, which is why they attack you in the first place, because they see you as somebody who's got something that they don't and they feel threatened. Don't buy into it. Don't sit back and think, oh, oh, I'm being, I'm being attacked by, by, by rudimentary moronic f uh, fractards who don't know what the heck is going on. I'm so, un I'm so overmatched. You're not overmatched. If somebody's a moron and they don't know what they're talking about, what have you got to fear? Okay? It's one of my favorite quotes of myself. You've got nothing to fear from people who know nothing. <laughs> okay? I think that's about straightforward. Matt Presti and Robert Ote. Ah, uh, my guess. And uh, the last question I usually like to... Um, man, two hours has flown by just like that, hasn't it, guys? Indeed. Absolutely. We've only got a couple of minutes left. In fact, do you have an hour or two after the show uh, uh, spare or something? Because we, we do an after the show uh, uh, talk with the listeners and, and things like that if, you, if you're willing to stay on. But but for, for the moment anyway, I'd like to uh, offer you the opportunity to answer my famous question. Towards the end of the show, we ask everybody about self-censorship. So... If there's anything that you normally wouldn't say on radio or normally wouldn't say on your video because it, it might seem a little bit too far out for some people or you might get those um, reactionary brain spasm type responses and attacks to your character and what have you, that's the reason why we choose not to say certain things because it looks a little bit nuts <laughs> to those who are intellectually dishonest. But I'm, I'm acting under the assumption that there isn't really uh, a whole lot like that that you, that you keep from people, is there? 
you kind of seem very open and, and honest and, and willing to talk about pretty much anything. I was just wondering if there's anything that you don't generally talk about. Not me. I'd say my website is a mirror of everything you're saying. Yeah, and I've got a, a plethora of music on my website from 1992 to 2012, and my entire life story is in that all those probably about 110 songs which are on players and anyone can listen to them for free. Okay. okay. So in terms of life advice and anybody who's starting off uh, in any kind of field, really, what have you learned in your life that you'd really like to pass on to people and the listeners? Maybe people who are just starting out or maybe even people who've been doing it for a long time and feel, and feel like it might be a bit too much. Well, I would like to convey the, um, the realizations I've had through my own shamanic experiences as well as uh, reading and studying the works of Walter and Leo Russell that you know, we're all extensions of the one universal mind. And man's current conception of God, or as I prefer to call it, the creator, more in a, a Native American kind of way is how I see it. Um, it's universal mind. You know, it's like being in the white room with Neo and, and uh, uh, Morpheus. who's the other guy? Morpheus. Morpheus. That's, that's like the, the white mind of creation. It's you know, creation is red and blue, and white centers the two. So from white, the division comes. The pure white light of consciousness is what all illuminates from all cultures who, you know, religions were sadly based upon, which have only served to divide man. It's, it's you know, illumination is the ultimate goal of mankind. Even Albert Einstein said his greatest desire was to have a divine illumination. And divine illumination... You know, it's literally tapping into the, the source itself, and we are all extensions of that source. We are, in other words, an extension of the Creator having a human experience. We are not separate from the Creator in any way, shape, or form, nor are we separate from each other. And the problem with mankind today is that what he does to another, he does to himself. And he has not learned that fundamental rule of what being one with everyone is and how to define oneness. Oneness is not a bunch of light beings floating around in the sky having spiritual experiences, looking down on earth, going, all those sad people. Oneness is realizing that your actions affect others to the most infinite star. When a kid throws a ball up in the air, this, the furthest most stars adjust their orbit to compensate. Everything is that connected. And that's what my shamanic experiences have told me. I've never learned that in a church, never learned it from a book. I just know that everything is one within myself. I don't sense it with my eyes, ears, nose, you know, taste buds, or, or, or feel it with my skin. I sense, I, I, I know this to be. And there's a very definite difference between sensing and knowing like I said earlier, a satellite cannot know anything because it has eyes and ears. But uh, a human being can know things, like love, for instance, which or at is least, the basis. Or at least a human universe. being who has eyes to see and ears to hear. Uh, exactly. I think and, gonna... and you should use your, use your inner eyes and ears, not your outer ones. Indeed. And that's what the difference between knowing and thinking is, okay. or sensing. And Robert, final words of wisdom. We've probably only got about uh, less than two minutes uh, to, to go here. No problem. Um, yeah, I would agree with, with Matt. Um, I definitely would pursue the shamanic experiences that those are what open my eyes and really going to nature. You know, all the great illuminates, they, they've all said, look, we learned what we know from studying nature, from going out in nature and becoming still, going to that still point of, of uh, silence in the, in the twin opposing vortices of your own heart where your soul resides and just go where that, that union with the creator is and everything can be revealed to you, anything. There's nothing that nature can't teach you. You know, it's completely opposed to the system of memorizing formulas and equations and theories of academia. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, not a terribly bad place to leave it. We have to plug your websites as well. So if you if you'd please do that, because this this show is kind of like a bathtub. It doesn't work very well if uh, unless there's at least one plug. Sure, my site's free energy and free thinking. Um, that's uh, f e a n d f t dot com. That's abbreviated. You just type it into Google, you can get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what's yep, the other uh, website? And 
Mine is uh, Matt, M-A-T-T, Presti, P-R-E-S-T-I dot com. And also the joint website for our productions is thesecretoflight.com. And that uh, gets into the work and breaks down the Russellian science, philosophy, and, and universal laws. It was authored by Walter and Leo Russell. All right, guys. Well, that's... um. That's a damn fine show. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. gentlemen, for joining us. And uh, if you have any spare time after the show as well, every day after the show, ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to it live, uh, that's 10 a.m. through midday in New Zealand local time. And uh, I think it's 6 till 8 p.m. Eastern, 3 till 5 p.m. Pacific, 5 till 7 Central, and 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. GMT. Now, if you're around uh, towards the end of the show, each day, you can visit the chat room at thevinnieeastwoodshow.com and click on the chat room button. It's up on the uh, top right of the uh, screen there. You come on in to the chat room, give us your Skype name, and we will have you part of the Vinnie Eastwood social network. Okay, now the social network is just basically getting truthers from all over the world at the same time just to have a conversation about anything we all want to bring us together, to make us feel happy. So if you want to do that, VinnieEastwoodShow.com. Oh, well, that's nice. There's there's one person at least who's uh, managed to start up a truth of career without uh, ending their other one. What about what about you, Robert? Same thing. Um, actually, I worked in the recording industry as a you know recording engineer for about 15 years, and um, you know with the advent of the personal computer back around 2000 2001, uh, a lot of the uh, small studios I worked in were put out of business because you know most people could just produce a CD or, right on their their computer. So for the last 10 years, I've been kind of working from one ranch restoration, you know, gardening, uh, doing, doing all these, uh, these jobs where I basically caretake ranches and stuff. And I just finally acquired a, um, a job recently. I'm moving on in the next few days to a horse ranch. So um, I, I, I like being on ranches. I like being out in the, in the, um, the wilds. And being close to nature, working with organic gardens and fruit trees and walnuts and stuff. So, um, no, it hasn't affected me. I mean, I, I don't place, you know, the acquisition of, you know, wealth is higher on my priority. I mean, I've been pretty much obsessed with uh, knowledge and wisdom for, for most of my life. I mean, I had a shamanic experience also uh, back in 1976, which got me on this path so all right well we're coming to break that's a perfect time to leave it there uh we'll be right back in just a few minutes ladies and gentlemen uh, matt presti and robert otay are my guests from the secret of light.com right back just a few minutes ladies and gentlemen don't you go anywhere if you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family The New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Hi, this is Wendy Adams from Light Waves Radio Inner Circle. I want you to think for a moment. What would it be like if there was no more Vinnie Eastwood? No more shows, no more videos, no more support, no more champion of the underdog, no more humor to help us get through. Just no more Vinnie Eastwood. Wouldn't you understand that what he does is for all of us, for the greater good, He's all about spreading the truth of his country and many countries. And there is a misconception. People seem to believe that he is living high on the hog, so to speak. Well, the truth is, he isn't. I'm asking you, please reach into your hearts. Go to the com and make a small donation. Any donation is welcome. Just do what you can, but do something. The world needs Vinnie Eastwood, and now he needs you. 
Do you realise every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sap. In fact, uh, uh, come on with us now. Robert, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you too. Okay, well, we've heard uh, Matt's uh, sort of background about how he got into this whole um, light journey and, f and philosophical modality. I was wondering, uh, what actually kind of woke you up and got you into all of this? Um, I began studying it uh, quite a long time ago. Um, just an interest. Uh, actually, you know, back in 1976 when I was going to uh, university, my professors told me after the first six weeks of school in chemistry class that the nuclear theory of the atom they just taught us was a fraud. They said, look, this thing's just a model. It's not real. Um, you know, it's just what we're basically uh, forced to teach you as part of the curriculum. So, you know, that got me thinking a long, long time ago. Well, you know, what was the point of even studying chemistry if, in fact, the foundational premise of this nuclear theory of the atom was false? So uh, through my own realizations and through, you know, basically being taught by a wise man, uh, the seeds of Russellian science were actually planted in my consciousness back in the early 90s by a man named Gene Davis and he didn't tell me about you know who the source of this information was being Walter and Leo Russell but he got me thinking about the cubic wave fields and this this cosmology that Walter Russell had taught and then about you know when 95 1995 when the internet really kind of became available to most people I started doing a lot of research because I was very interested in in these topics you know when uh, what I began to see was a lot of ether vortex theories that went all the way back to Descartes you know were several hundred years old that that you never even heard about you know there are dozens of them dozens of people trying to basically uh, say the same things about their the intuition, the um, the inner insight that they had into the process of working in, with nature. So uh, eventually, I found uh, Victor Schauberger. Uh, I created a website. I started really focusing on free energy technologies like Victor Schauberger, uh, Nikola Tesla, T. H. Murray, and others. And after a couple of years of authoring this website, I discovered the secret of light. And once I started reading The Secret of Light, I realized this was the, all the stuff that Gene Davis had been telling me, you know, the, the fundamental, uh, the foundations of, of this Russellian cosmology. So over the next, you know, s several years, my site basically morphed into a website uh, focusing on the works of Walter and Leo Russell, which explained all of these, uh, these theories that people had had that we were never, ever taught or even exposed to in academia. I mean, we see a very one-sided view of, uh, of science, according to that we never hear the other side of any of this. So um, that's the way I got into it. Okay, okay. Well, I think that's a lot um, similar to do with lots of other people. It's, it's like somebody tells you something, and they're in an official position, and you find out that it's wrong, and yet heaps of officials all keep backing up each other, and they secretly admit that they're wrong. So you're like, sure. what, what? What's going on here? The confusion starts to set in. And um, I think, um, as you mentioned before, uh, uh, Matt, that uh, in necessity is the mother of all invention. So what happens is we necessitate that it's, n uh, that it's now uh, time to understand what's really going on. And as a direct result, we have to invent a whole new way of thinking and a whole new basic um, life path for ourselves in order to even fit in to that invention that we've come up with. It's like, I now want to understand. I once was blind. Here we go. Now, you lose everything as a result of doing that, like career paths, etc. They kind of disappear. Did, did that happen to you guys anyway, or did you not really have much of a career and then all of a sudden this became it? Well, actually, my career, I'm a, a technician, audio technician, and... Uh, in the electrical field, as an electrician, I studied the uh, atomic models that were taught in school and whatnot. Uh, you know, the, the, the current theories, the, the Big Bang, the one-way heat death expanding universe. But I also have a shamanic background, which was completely and utter, utterly different in my experiential life, that I actually experienced something that was unlike anything in any book anywhere. But when I had acquired the Russell teachings, what I began to read from Walter Russell correlated and qualified a lot of my shamanic experiences. So it was natural for me to move into that, that area of, of study. Uh, as far as do, does it affect my job? No, I still do what I, what I need to do. I'm, you know, I'm one of many who are 
you know, researching independently, trying to bring new light and truth to the world. But I still have to chase the capitalistic carrot, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this not for the money. I'm doing this to try to give my children and, and the children of other people a better world to live in, one that's not full of toxicity and pollution and Fukushima's and, and, and more meltdown reactors. You know, the danger of, of you know, radiation, radioactivity is, is a, another big reason that I wanted to do this because, you know, I had had a uh, visionary experience just a couple of years ago, and I saw probably six months before the Fukushima reactor meltdown in my vision, mile-long line of Japanese men carrying buckets of water and dumping it into a hole by the ocean. And the, every time they would dump a bucket, it would just turn into steam. And so that was a very profound experience when I, when I actually heard of you know, the meltdown and, and what was going on. It, it qualified that vision. So fortunately, I'd already read the book Atomic Suicide by Walter and Leo Russell, which really gets into the reasons as to why nuclear fission is deadly and should not be used as a world fuel because we might not have a world in another 50 years if we continue to do this. It could kill every living thing in every blade of grass and eventually force humans to have to move to the poles to survive. But um, you know, people well, just do not... Un- that's another thing. They, they wouldn't really be able to live, move to the poles to survive because we've been using uh, DDT and other pesticides for so long and they've all been carried by the trade winds up to the, up to the poles. So we wouldn't be able to survive there either. Exactly. So just to try and stave off our own extinction with the stupidity of, of you know, what these people have put forward as using usable power, all because of greed and avarice, and, and they do not want to share, and that is a major concern of mine as well. So I just try to be a, a person that I would like to, you know, I try to be the change that I seek to see in the world as opposed to just talking about it. And uh, as far as my work and employment, it has not affected it at all. In fact, it's, it's, you know, I get the chance to talk with people in the industry about things like this. And I told them I had to leave work early today just to get here to do this interview. And they were much obliged to let me go. So... Ladies and gentlemen, are you tuning in? Are you listening? Can you hear it broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com? You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the lighter side of genocide because in a world so full of chaos and madness, if you lose your sense of humor, you'll go friggin' nuts. Especially me. A very special guest today, uh, and we'll be joined by his uh, uh, friend in, in probably the next segment, if he ever accepts our contact request, but we have Matt Presty. Matt, welcome to the program. Hello. It's good, good to be here, Vince. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about who you are and, uh, and the, thing, the topic that we're going to be discussing today. Well, I'm an autodidactic musician and philosopher and i'm also co-producer of the series the secret of light which is teaching to mankind a science that is not taught in universities today but uh it's based around the work of walter and leo russell two illuminates who uh have since refolded from the planet um and we have a video series at thesecretoflight.com that is free for anyone to view Okay, okay. Well, let's get into um, uh, you personally first, because I think we'll actually wait till Robert comes in. Um, he, he actually appears to have accepted uh, contact requests and is uh, online uh, right now, uh, so hopefully the board will be able to bring him up uh, soon enough. But before we go to that, I want to talk about you personally, Matt, and just, just the kind of person you are and what actually brought you into this whole field um, uh, regarding philosophy and uh, the secret of light, as it were. Well, I've uh, been researching conspiracies, uh, transcendence, enlightenment for many years, and um, I discovered the work of Walter Russell in 2008, and since then, it has been an endeavor of the heart to uh, deliver a new science to mankind for um, the purpose of stopping the one-way heat death, expanding universe theory, because all it can produce under that current scientific formula is exploding 
machines, machines that explode energy. And what Russell Science will do is free mankind and teach him a two-way motion universe, which is cyclical, not a one-way heat death dying universe. So the cyclical universe, we consider the other end of the pendulum or the other end of the cycle, which is implosion. And implosion technology is what's going to free us from the hellhole that's been created by the energy barons, the, the central bankers, and the warmongers now running this racket. Well, they've been running it for... Um... <clears throat> Well, quite a long time, and uh, one one would conceive, and this is a, this is a big theory on the part of a lot of people, is that uh, well, basically they've been running it since uh, since time began, and and it's a heck of a lot more ancient the uh, the current ruling class than we would ever conceive of. Now, I don't know exactly uh, uh, what the substantiation behind that claim is, but it doesn't change the fact that there are a bunch of criminal sociopathic. Uh, psycho bankers that rule the world today through the issuance of currency, all right? And and as a direct result of having the issuance of currency under their direct control, they're able to control pretty much everything else. They're able to control the scientific, medical, military, and industrial um, sectors of society, education, politics. Basically, he who has the gold makes the rules, and they're capable of making gold up. That is uh, true for now, but... Uh... If the enti entire economy collapses, people are going to be forced through necessity to begin inventing new things. And as they say, uh, necessity, um, you know, the mother of all invention is, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. So when mankind is hurting enough, he's going to have no choice but to either create his own power or continue to be enslaved even deeper into this, you know, ridiculous paradigm that's now... Uh, running the show i think uh australia just began carbon carbon taxing um and also it's it's come out that they will now fine you uh i believe it's uh 1.5 million australian dollars if you come out publicly uh disagreeing with the carbon tax so yeah aussies you you don't like your carbon taxes how about a $1.5 million tax? <laughs> That'll teach you for trying to save the environment, eh? Kind of like those hybrid cars. Don't you, don't you love that? The whole idea is, is, is that you're got trying to save the environment. But the problem is, you wind up making your own environment, as in your body, your mind, your soul. That's the environment that you have to live in every day. Uh, you make that a heck of a lot more stressed, poorer, and uh, as a result unhealthy stress and uh, and poverty are big indicators of how long you're going to live so isn't it isn't that great that's wonderful we've now got a carbon tax which will tax absolutely everything that we do uh in every way shape and form so that poverty will be impossible to escape forever at least that's the idea but i'm sure there's many ways of turning this around don't you think matt I would hope so. I mean, it's going to take a lot of people to think differently, and that's the main drag on humans escaping anything at this point. As long as people continue to think the same and accept the same mediocrity life that has been handed to us all, we're never going to escape this hellhole. But uh, what Robert and I are doing jointly, and along with many other people, is uh, spreading the information about the two-way motion universe um, mankind as it is right now will never, in this currently current university system, as physics and science is taught with these so-called laws that are not really laws. They're just they're like laws of, you know, any other man's laws. They're they're not infallible. We have to um, overthrow the current scientific dogma that's pervading all the universities, and so we're teaching a two-way science, which is based uh, right alongside with. Um, Walter Russell, it is Walter Russell's science, and he was a cosmic illuminate who had a 39-day illumination, and so the knowledge he brought back, 40,000 words written down and hundreds of charts and drawings that really lay out in, in a way nobody's ever, you know, said before that we, you know, have a cyclic electric universe. Okay, now we have uh, Robert has. Uh